Today's video is not so much about news, okay? There's not really much to talk about other than, I guess, Ray Ford Tesla saying his sources are claiming that a prototype model of the 25K Tesla has been made and they expect to go into trial production by the end of this year for maybe a late launch next year, specifically for the Shanghai market. And that gets me pumped and I hope that leaker ends up being correct, but today's video is primarily going to be a prediction one about what steps I think Tesla is going to take to make the most affordable affordable vehicle ever and kind of try to deliver on that original promise that the Model 3 was trying to fulfill but kind of struggled to because mass production was a lot more difficult than Elon and Tesla expected. Keep in mind, I don't have inside sources. I'm just merely a guy on the internet that is really excited for this upcoming model that Tesla has confirmed the existence of via battery day and they even list it on their shareholder deck as they don't know where they're gonna build it and they don't know what stage of development it's in but we know it's coming eventually and this is a model that they plan on targeting within the next couple years because in September of 2020 they said it was around three years away so that means it's reasonable to expect it sometime in 2023 and I'm thinking in China it might actually end up being earlier because the EV competitors are picking up a lot of traction there with the Xpeng P5 having pretty decent range at a $25,000 starting price but Xpeng is quite a lower volume manufacturer so Tesla doesn't really have too much to worry about there but manufacturing efficiency is much better at Giga Shanghai and they're doing great with volume production over there so they've had time you know they hired a lot of people to work at the design team in Shanghai over a year ago now and I imagine they all must be at work at this prototype model which they want to mass produce as soon as possible and I do think that the compact vehicle whether or not it's called Model 2 Model Q or whatever Tesla China decides on it's probably going to be prioritized in the Asian and European markets first and likely the United States last just because in our country there's more people buying SUVs and pickup trucks so that's likely where Tesla's focus is gonna be with Giga Texas but eventually hopefully we do get a price point that low as China and Europe will but this vehicle is going to be taking all of the experience Tesla has learned from mass producing their vehicles and trying to apply it in one vehicle where they really have to skip out on as many unnecessary parts and as many unnecessary processes as possible so I would like to assume Tesla's not crazy enough to go with the uh, roll up window method but who knows maybe to get numbers low enough they might just do that realistically I actually don't that's not part of my predictions list I'm just trying to get you in the mindset of we really got to cheapen this thing down and frankly as long as it has autopilot and good range which the few things that have been confirmed about this model is that it's going to be using lithium iron phosphate batteries and they expect the range to be over 200 50 miles on a charge and of course the starting price to be in the ballpark of 25,000 so obviously those specs alone could sell any vehicle just for the cost of ownership being so low and it'll likely qualify for some electric vehicle incentives in China my guess is to expect the overall exterior design to feel very similar to the Model Y I've seen a lot of compacts out there that seem to like having a very flat back that just kind of drops off because that's how you maximize a smaller body you know a smaller footprint overall but still maximizing interior cargo space. I personally think Tesla is going to have a bigger emphasis on range and having a big flat drop off on the back is typically not good for your aerodynamics. So similar to how the Cybertruck slopes down to the bottom to help with aerodynamic efficiency and the same story with the Model Y, how it curves back quite a bit towards the end. I imagine a similar design as that Model Y, just imagine not having as much cargo space in the back so that when you do open the hatch, you only have a couple of feet of space to store stuff before you reach the back of that seat. So obviously Model 2 is only going to have a five-seater option. I do believe it will be a four-door. I think that two-door vehicles sell too bad for Tesla to consider making that a compelling electric car. And Elon has stated on several occasions they're not trying to make a real crappy car for $25,000. And coupes in general just do not sell very well. So I personally don't think they're going to take it that route. It's possible, but my prediction is that they're still going to want to go with the four-door method. And I imagine the interior to feel somewhat similar to the Model 3 because from what we'd heard at Giga Shanghai on this upcoming compact model is that it's built on the Model 3 platform and the main benefit of reusing a lot of parts from the Model 3 and Y is you already have a lot of suppliers and parts being shipped to the factory that are already being mass produced so the more parts you can recycle and the more parts you don't have to completely re-engineer probably the cheaper and easier to scale this vehicle is ultimately gonna be so I imagine the seats and even 
even the 15 inch display to be mostly the same including wireless chargers but I actually think Tesla is going to leave out a couple of things for one my guess is with the Model 2 they're gonna make the jump to no gear stocks they're already kind of experimenting with this on the Model S and X which deliveries for the S have begun and it certainly has gotten a lot of backlash with the yoke and the capacitive buttons but I think Tesla is going to take what they've learned from that vehicle and what people have responded with and implement kind of similar tech into the cheaper Model 2 just to leave out more parts leave out more complexity and it may require a slight re-engineering of the steering wheel which I think will just involve having blinker buttons whether or not they're triggers on the back of the wheel or little physical buttons on the side of your scroll wheels in my opinion that will allow them to simplify manufacturing because you won't have gear stocks to worry about anymore and when you change direction in the vehicle you're just gonna do the same thing you do on the model S and X display and swipe up to go forward and swipe down to go backward and then you'll have a little park button in the top left corner that way they don't have to have these gear stocks sticking out behind your steering wheel at all times Tesla likes minimalism and keeping the interior clean and the horn I believe will be in the same spot and there won't be a windshield wiper button like there is on the yoke I'm not pitching that the model 2 does have a yoke just because it's not a performance vehicle and I think they're gonna try to make it appealable to everyday people not just bragging about how great it is on the track because I do think this will more than likely be one of the slowest Teslas out there with not a huge emphasis on performance because for one it's an iron phosphate battery so that adds to the weight and the energy density isn't super high and I also predict that because this will be a compact smaller vehicle not quite as long as the Model 3 I think they're only going to have a single motor option rear wheel drive only I don't imagine Tesla doing dual motor with this vehicle and that one motor because this will be probably the lightest Tesla ever will likely be able to accelerate pretty fast so I'm not saying it'll be a super slow car I'm imagining a zero to 60 time of six seconds or seven seconds somewhere in that ballpark but for the sake of manufacturing efficiency and not having too many complications at the factory because this vehicle is going to be optimized and designed from the ground up to be scaled I'm predicting there's only gonna be one range option I don't think we're gonna have a standard range and a long range variant there's just going to be one battery size with one motor and that makes it a lot easy on the factory side to dedicate every single assembly line to a vehicle that people are gonna order so the windshield wiper situation will be similar to how it is on the Model 3 and Y right now where it's done automatically and if you want to change it manually you're just gonna have to do it on the display and because I think the steering wheel will only have a couple blinker buttons that means that to turn on autopilot you're probably just gonna tap the little gray steering wheel on the display which already I think would be a fairly simple way to activate it because it lets you know when autopilot is available to be turned on and I do think autopilot will be included not full self-driving but all the hardware for it will be so when you activate autopilot it will be a little bit awkward because it's another display interaction that some people would rather have as a physical button but we got to cut as many corners as we can here and I think that just tapping the steering wheel icon on the display will save them a lot of parts and simplify manufacturing as a whole I actually think that heated seats will be standard on all five but similar to the partial premium interior on the standard range model 3 only the front seats will be heated but if you want to unlock the heated seats in the back you're gonna have to pay like $300 via software unlock through the app which a lot of people don't like but I think that the profit margins on this vehicle are obviously gonna be pretty thin because all of your money is going towards the battery pack and trying to get this price as low as possible so they're gonna rely a lot on services revenue with this vehicle meaning that if they're able to pocket $300 just from 10% of their customers unlocking the rear heated seats that's gonna make a fairly big difference on the profit margins because how many people are buying this thing and of course you will be able to buy full self-driving via software unlock with this vehicle and by the time it comes out it could easily be a 12 or fifteen thousand dollar purchase so that means much more profit is made through the services of this vehicle than is through selling of the actual hardware which is crazy but with the price of full self-driving getting higher and higher and the price of batteries and manufacturing getting cheaper and cheaper I think that's what's going to be a lot of the future of automotive revenue is just how much services money could you pull from your customers through this vehicle and a similar situation with premium connectivity I think it will at best give you 30 days to have access to music streaming and satellite view and the web browser and that type of thing but then 30 days go by you're gonna have to spend 10 bucks a month to reactivate it and hopefully people feel like this is a reasonably affordable car so dropping 10 bucks a month on giving it some more premium features people are willing to do that and three hundred dollars for activating the rear heated seats okay I'll pay for that doesn't have to be a huge take rate on the customer base
case, but even if it's a small percentage, it's enough to offset all of the work of putting that hardware into the vehicle. Another compromise I could see Tesla making, and this one I'm still very torn on, but I actually think there won't be a frunk in the vehicle, and I think that it's not necessarily going to be left out just because there's no room. I mean, yes, this will probably be the smallest Tesla ever made, and they're going to have real crunch space for the HVAC system and the windshield wiper fluid and accessing all of the parts underneath the vehicle through that opening hood, but it's mainly just going to be to simplify manufacturing processes of not having to build in too much plastic in too many compartments just for that frunk area, and that'll be another reason to justify, well, Model 3 and Model Y might be for you if you want more storage space, you want better performance, you want longer range, you want more premium interior, but if you're trying to go cheap and buy a Tesla for under $30,000, this is what you have to put up with, is not very much storage space. The Cyber Owners Club designed this Tesla Q concept behind me, which I thought was pretty cool, because they actually took off side view mirrors and door handles, and I think if it's legally acceptable, which in Europe, actually, you can build vehicles without side view mirrors and just go with cameras, then they more than likely will take off side view mirrors as soon as possible, because that saves you a ton of range, and with a smaller vehicle and a smaller battery, that's going to become immensely more useful. Plus, Tesla wanting to make sure autopilot is a standard feature, there's going to be side cameras on there anyway, and I could see on the Model 2 just having the side view camera show up on the display whenever you activate the blinker. But with the door handles, I'm still not entirely sure. I think it might actually be cheaper if they build in some kind of track pad similar to the Roadster where you just kind of swipe up and down on it and that opens your doors. Obviously not self-presenting, but it just unlatches them similar to the Model 3 and Y door handle mechanism now. But I'm not sure if that touchpad system would become more problematic than just a traditional Model 3 or Y door handle. I imagine that style of handle is probably not too expensive to implement or manufacture, especially since they probably have tons of them coming in already for Model 3 and Y production in China. So I don't think removing door handles will save them that much money with the Model 2, and honestly, I could see them sticking around with them, but the side view mirror thing, I could absolutely see them trying to get rid of as soon as possible, and potentially even no powered lift gate. I could see a ton of people being annoyed by that, but it's one of those features that might just be good enough to push people to get a Model 3 or Y. Not that the powered lift gate is a super expensive part, but it is one part that is going to add to the assembly process and add to the overall cost, so if you're buying a Model 2, you might have to open up the hatch with your own arm strength. I even don't see Tesla actually making a performance model or anything that just suddenly goes way faster. I think what actually might be easier for Tesla is to make one size fits all at the factory, but similar to what we've seen with other Tesla vehicles, they might software limit the acceleration and ask you to pay $1,000 or $2,000 via software package to unlock more performance out of your motor. That way they can collect more of services revenue. So if someone is spending $25,000 on a Tesla and they feel like, yeah, only $2,000 more and I can improve the zero to 60 times, sure, I'll do it. So you spend the two grand and now you have a Tesla that you still technically spend under 30K on, but now it does zero to 60 in four seconds or maybe less, depending on what type of motor they want to put in this vehicle. Though I can imagine the tire options being fairly limited as well, not having too many options to choose from with that to help with manufacturing efficiency. And same thing with paint colors. I wouldn't be shocked if they decided to scale down on how many paint options there are, which honestly there isn't much right now. But just because Tesla knows this is going to be a heavily in-demand vehicle and there's going to be so much volume for it, the less complexities they have on the manufacturing line, the more they're going to be able to produce overall. So if there's only black, white, and red, and they just call it a day with that, if it helps with the price being lower, then I think it's actually worth pursuing. So I hope you guys got an interesting view on how I think the Model 2 will be built. I do think that they could end up exporting this vehicle because Giga Shanghai has become this excellent export hub for Tesla, shipping to Europe and Australia and that type of thing. So it could ship internationally, and depending on how well it sells, they might even start building this model in Giga Berlin after Model Y has ramped. I absolutely expect a rear and front single piece casting and perhaps a structural battery pack. Although in China, I could also see them using CATL for prismatic batteries because they're already ordering a ton of those and they can be built at scale for pretty cheap. But if there's any details or things you think Tesla might leave out or maybe you think Tesla will still include or do you think they're just going to scrap the Model 3 because so many people are going to want to buy this thing? Does my Model 2 concept sound too stupid or too bad to be sellable? All that good stuff, feel free to let me know down below. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.